Hey guys, welcome to this first part of the V-Ray exterior series for Cinema 4D. In the last series that I did, we worked on that interior beach house, and that one was all about interiors and how to do that, but for this one, we're going to be working on exteriors. Now here in front of you, you can see we've got a house with some trees, some bushes and different plants and things like that. And I thought that since the cooler temperatures are now coming around, and it won't be long before the winter is here in the U.S. where I live, then I figured it would probably be cool for us to do a winter scene, which means a lot of ice and a lot of snow. So what I've done here is I've added some plants and trees that I've collected over the past few years, and I've just kind of thrown them in here because I think that they probably would be most fitting for a winter-style scene. So, of course, we've got this tree here, which... Uh, seems to have all of its leaves on it still, which is fine because we're just going to use the Magic Snow plugin in order to cover everything with snow. We also have a pine tree right here. That one is also already covered in snow. And we have this uh, dead tree over here that has already lost all of its foliage. And this one here already has snow on it as well. There's also this little bush here. Actually, I think it's a tree. And we have this little tree here, which is leaning over, which has some snow on it as well. So right now, the only thing that has snow would be just these three trees here, which is this small one here. We have this tall one in the back, and we have the pine tree. So everything else, we're going to use the Magic Snow plugin in order to generate some snow to cover everything. So if you don't have the Magic Snow plugin installed, it is free, and you can get that by going to nitro4d.com. And what I'll do is I'll include a link in the description to this video. That way you can be linked to that plugin so you can download it. Now, there is one downside to the plugin. It will only work with R12, R13, and R14. Now for those of you guys who are using R11 and 11.5, you're not going to be able to use the plugin and that's going to be a really big downside to following this tutorial because we're going to be doing a winter scene and we're going to be coating everything in snow using that plugin. So perhaps maybe you know of another way of creating snow to cover all of your objects, but for those of you guys who are following along with this and you want to do the snow, you have to have at least R12. So keep that in mind. All right, so if you read the description to this video, you're going to see two download links. The first download link will contain the R13 scene file. Now, for those of you that are using previous versions of Cinema 4D, you're not going to be able to open up R13. I don't know the compatibility if you're using R12 and you try to open an R13 file. I don't know if you can do that. However, I do know that if you're using R11.5 and anything before that, you're not going to be able to open R13. So the second download link in the description to this video will contain an OBJ file. It's the same identical scene file that you see here that I have opened. The only difference is I exported it as an OBJ. That way all of you guys with previous versions of Cinema 4D will still be able to follow along. All right, so let's start talking about the lighting. When doing exterior scenes, especially when using V-Ray, there are two popular methods to do that. The first method is the same method that we used in the first V-Ray series that I did with the interior, which was we created an infinite light, and the infinite light gets a V-Ray tag. So we'll go over to V-Ray tags, and we want to give it a V-Ray light tag. The light type stays at infinite. We need to enable the shadows, and we'll go over here to sunlight. And for that first series that I did, I enabled the physical sun, physical sky, and then we just kind of adjusted some of these parameters. But that's one way of doing it. Now, for this winter snow scene, I wanted to do something in uh, perhaps maybe the early morning, or better yet, the late night, right when the sun goes down at the period known as dusk. So in order to do that, what we would have to do is we need to give the light a Cinema 4D tag, and we need to get the target tag. And the target, let's just give it... Uh, let's just target it at the house. So we'll drop the house down here into the target object link. And what we want to do, I'm going to pull the light up. And then we want to just kind of take it over here to the side. 
And the way this works is that this light right now is acting as the sun. So if the sun is directly up here pointing down, it's going to be very bright. The sky is going to be a very nice bright blue color. But we want this to be dusk, which means the sun has just set, but it's not pitch black yet outside. There's still light from the horizon. So we want to take this light and go all the way down with it until it is almost sitting directly down here on this grid. So somewhere about right there. Now if we do that, what that's going to do is it's going to give us a dusk light setting for this. And it's going to mimic the sun that has just started to set or is already setting. And that's going to look really nice. Now, for this particular tutorial, we're not going to use this method. If you want to use this method, then, you know, feel free to go ahead and do that. But we're going to use something a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the light altogether. And what we're going to use is an area light dome. So let's create an area light. And we'll give it a V-Ray tag and it needs to have a V-Ray light tag. Go back over here to the common tab. We have area light. We need to enable the shadows. We'll go over here to the area light and the area type. We need to change from rectangle to a dome. Now we need to enable spherical dome and we want to use a texture. Now also in the download link for both of those downloads, regardless of which one you got, in the texture folder, there's going to be a high-res HDRI image. We're going to use the HDRI image in order to light the scene. All right, so what we want to do is click on the load button here for the texture. And we want to go over into the texture folder for your scene file. And we want to click on the 1941 duskblue.hdr. Click open. Now there's a couple things that we need to do here. First of all, we want to hit Control D. It's going to bring up the project information. And we want to make sure that linear workflow is turned off and your input color profile is set to sRGB. All right, so once we have that, we want to go back over to the light. And right now we need to change the texture resolution. I'm just going to take that up to 1024. And we want to click here on this texture name and you can see what we've got here is you can see the HDRI is not showing up as a blue sky. It's actually showing up as a, a very bright white with black underneath it. So we need to click on the name to open that up and the color profile is currently set to embedded. That's the default and we want to change this to sRGB. Once we have that changed to sRGB, we can take the exposure and we can start bringing the exposure down. until we get to maybe something like, let's try negative 4.9. Now, if you don't want to change the exposure type here, what you could do is go back and click here on the arrow to bring up these different shaders. And we want to select a filter shader that will put it inside of a filter shader. Click on filter. And then what you could do is make the adjustments here to the lightness, the brightness, or perhaps even the gamma correction here. So if we go back into here, and let's just change this back to zero for a moment. Okay, so now we've got it back to where it was. And now we can take the lightness down. Let's try to take this up to maybe about negative 97. So you can see we're getting the same result there as we were with taking the exposure down. So I'm just going to undo this a couple times. And I'm just going to take the exposure down to negative 4.9. Okay, so now we need to go turn the V-Ray render engine on. So let's go over to the uh, render here. and I'm going to change it from standard to V-Ray. Click on V-Ray bridge. And the anti-aliasing for now, because we're only going to be working with quick previews, I'm going to... Uh, leave the type set to adaptive DMC and we'll go with a, a minimum subdivision of one and a maximum of two. I'm also going to go over here to color mapping and I'm going to change the color mapping to exponential and we'll just leave everything here where it's at and we'll go over here to the indirect illumination which is the GI and right now it's turned off 
Now, what I'm getting ready to show you is all dependent upon what you want to do. Because we're using an HDR, and since we're using that, we can either turn the global illumination on, or we could leave it off and still get really good results. Because this HDR image has a lot of information in it concerning color and brightness, and since we're using image-based lighting, you can actually leave this uh, indirect illumination turned off and you're still going to get very good results. So let me show you what I mean. So right now we'll just leave this turned off. And we'll go over here to the house. And I don't have a camera set up at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just going to show you something really quick here. All right, so the subdivision right now is set to 8. So let me hide this so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm just going to render a little region here. Maybe something like right there. All right, so there is the image-based lighting using this HDR image. And of course, we have no global illumination turned on. Now, notice that it looks really, really blotchy and really dirty and grainy. Well, that's because we're using, first of all, an area light. And second of all, there's no global illumination turned on, which means everything is based on the sampling or the subdivision of the light. So let's take this uh, subdivision count from 8 and let's take that up to maybe something like 64 and then I'm going to render that same little region there and this time the image is going to look a lot better but it's going to take a little longer to render just simply because we turned up the sampling or in this case as V-Ray calls it subdivision so you can see just how nice it looks and we have no global illumination turned on. We're only using the image information coming from that HDR image. So this is what's known as image-based lighting. Okay, now if you want to use it this way for the rest of this tutorial, that's fine. You can do that if you want. However, I'm going to turn global illumination on. So I'm going to take the subdivision count back down to 8 and we'll go over to the render settings and we're going to turn on GI and I'm going to click here on the GI presets and I'm going to choose, let's see, I want medium outdoor. Okay, so what we have here is irradiance and the brute force. So that's going to be number 11. That's going to be our medium outdoor setting. So I'm going to choose that one. And then we'll go back and we'll render that same region again. All right, so there's the final image right there. And of course, it does look a little grainy and blotchy in certain areas, but that's okay because this is only going to be just for quick previews. But later on, we'll come back and we'll turn up the subdivision to 16 in this light here in order to uh, get a little smoother image here. Okay, now one thing that we want to do is we want to determine where do we want the sun to be at because you can see we've got the sun here right in the very middle of this HDR image. So we need to determine where that sun is at. So I'm just going to render a region here and I want to see if I can find any shadowing that's going to tell me where that's at. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just leave it where it's at right now. If we have to though, we can take this area light, go into the coordinates tab and we can actually rotate it around. So if I rotate this maybe negative 145 degrees, and then let's just say, let's render another region again. All right, so we'll just leave it at negative 145 right now. And if we have to, we can always come back later and change it. All right, so now we have the light set up. So the next thing that we're gonna do in the next part is we're going to start playing around with the Magic Snow plugin in order to start applying some snow to just about everything in the scene. So that about wraps up this part, and uh, we'll get started with the snow in the next part.